Welcome to BK Academy of Chess. This is Black Knight. And today we're going to discuss defending against the central pawns on the seventh rank. So let's begin. It's black to move. Where would black like to have his rook? On a2 or d2? Now let's examine the rook on d2. Now black could try to maintain control of the d-file to keep the white king trapped in front of his pawn. But this should look familiar. What is this position called and how should white play? This is known as the Lucina position. And if you're not familiar with this or need to review it, I provided a link to another video that we did on this position. But let's take a quick look at how it works. White simply checks the king so that its king can escape from in front of the pawn. But before the king moves out to the f-file, he has to provide the king shelter. He does so by moving his rook to the fourth rank, right? And when the rook comes to check the king, white is able to escape the checks by placing his rook in between the rook and the king, right? And now the pawn promotes. One other look at this position is moving the king to e2, right? Now, if the king tries to escape onto the d-file now, all black has to do is to harass the king with checks. And when the king moves away from the pawn, to attack the pawn. So how does white win this position? He checks the king to gain space for his king to escape onto f8. However, if black plays king to g8, how should white play? Well, he can't escape his king onto the d-file or he'll lose the rook, right? He simply checks the king again. Now the rook is in position to support the promotion of the pawn. So the king can escape. And as you can see, this is an easy win. <laughs> Placing the rook on a2 is the correct answer. Now, before we get into the solution, which was discovered by Tarash in 1906. Let's review a basic rule evolving rooks. And it's known as the Tarash rule by the person who discovered the solution to this problem here. And it states that you should place the rook behind past pawns, either yours or your opponent's. And that is a very good rule to follow. However, Tarash is later quoted as saying, always put the rook behind the pawn, except when it's incorrect to do so. And here, in 1906, he finds that this is one of those times where placing the rook behind the pawn does not work. How does black play to hold this position? The correct answer is just to harass the king with checks. The king will have no time to promote the pawn. And notice the king has nowhere to hide from the checks. The only thing the king can do to stop the checks is to attack the rook. But here, how does black hold for the draw? He simply places the rook behind the pawn. And this is a draw. Now, let's take a look at the characteristics of this position that makes it possible for a black to draw. Notice that the rook is on the long side of the board and the king is on the short side. This gives enough space in between the rook and the pawn in order for the rook to harass the king with checks. If the rook was on the b-file, the king could attack the rook and successfully return to help the pawn promote. The second characteristic is that the king is protecting the square adjacent to the pawn. This prevents the white king from finding shelter to hide itself from the checks. And the third characteristic is that the white rook is out of play. Notice that it cannot do anything 
to stop Black from checking the king. Now also notice, with the cooperation of the king, the rook can stop the pawn in its tracks from moving forward simply by harassing the king with checks. But he must need the three squares in between the rook and the pawn. For instance, let's turn the board around and imagine this position is being played from left to right. And what do we have here? We have a, pos a position that's similar to the Philidor, right? Where the king is protecting the square in front of the pawn, and the rook is behind the pawn, checking the king, right? So there's nowhere for the king to hide, and when the king goes to attack the rook, the rook moves behind the pawn. Well, let's flip the board around and imagine that now we're moving from the right to the left. Now we have something that is called the frontal attack. In this position, black does not even need its king because all black needs to do is to harass the king with checks. Now if the king tries to hide behind the pawn, then the rook moves to a7, attacking the pawn. Now I turn the board around just to demonstrate the importance of having three squares in between the rook and the pawn and to show that the pawn could be stopped dead in its tracks as long as the rook has three squares in between the rook and the pawn and he has the support of the king to prevent the opponent's king from hiding behind the pawn then black can hold the position well that's all for today guys <laughs>